Simity Samtastic here with Guild Wars 2. I can't really say back with Guild Wars 2 because this is actually my first video that I'm going to be putting up post-release. And it's been really good. I Yes, I selfishly spent several days not uploading anything and just enjoying the game and playing through it, enjoying the content and getting used to some of the things that I wasn't able to really experience in the, uh, in the beta testing. So I just got done with the photo op here. Say hi to the camera. Hi. And this is a pretty cool place. This is in, I actually can't remember what place we're in right here. This is Gendarn Fields. Okay, I wasn't sure. And I'm just hanging out up on top of this cliff thing here. And so let me see if I can actually get, I'm pretty sure I can get right over by the water. And we'll just have a little dive off of here. What I kind of wanted to do with this video and by kind of I mean really, is talk about all the things that has really set Guild Wars 2 apart from other games that I've played. Some of these things, you know, you've got everybody that's like, what's so great about Guild Wars 2? It's got dynamic events, it's got action-based combat, it's, it's got, uh, you know, the personal story that allows you to really experience your, your own hero's tale, and it's got, you know, what? underwater combat that's versatile and unique and yeah it's also it also looks amazing i don't want to talk about all those things that like every single magazine ever has already mentioned i want to talk about the things that i personally have felt to really make this a pretty awesome experience that i just things that i didn't expect to have uh when when getting into this game and so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and just jump off of here we in the water we are. So we're going to take a look at those bit by bit. The first thing I want to talk about here is actually the equipment and there is a lot to say about the equipment. They did a lot right with this. Uh, one of them is that like some of the weapons just look really cool. The Stygian axe right there is from the Hall of Monuments. And this other one is a cultural weapon that I picked up from the Silvari. And so each race has their own cultural armor traders and cultural weapons. And anybody can buy the cultural weapons, which uh, are like this guy right here, cultural weaponsmith, sells the cultural weapons. And the armors, uh, the armors for each race are exclusive to that race. You're not a Sura. The workings of my wares are so complex, only a Sura can be allowed to wear them. So, uh, you know, you may think that's racist, that they don't let other races wear their armor, but it's not. It's not a racial armor smith. It's a cultural armor smith. So, it's not racist, it's cultural. Anyway, you, uh, you can go up to any armor smith, normal armor smith, and get your light, medium, or heavy armor. And there are different kinds to choose from. This uh, this is cultural tier one, cultural silvery light armor that I'm wearing. And now that we're talking about it, we're going to take a look at the die system, which is really phenomenal. So you have your starter set of dies. That it just gives you these dies that you can work with for dying your, your armor at the beginning of the game. You always have access to these on any character. And then as you go through the game, killing enemies, or you can even make them uh, through through crafting, you can get unidentified dies, and you open those unidentified dies, and it gives you either a common, uncommon, or rare die. And as you can see, I've, I've found a number of pretty good dies here, so <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've found a lot. And you can, once you, basically once you find those unidentified dies, you open them up, and it picks one of these dies randomly, and you can either trade them at that point, give them to somebody, or open them for yourself. And if you open them, it it permanently gives it to that character, but you can use it as much or as little as you want. And so my goal is to get all of the dies on this character, because I really want to see this paint filled up with all the different colors that I can choose from. And this armor is, is kind of, it's difficult to die, but I think I found, basically once I got white, I uh, which I'm pretty sure is incredibly valuable, if the trading post were working right now, I could show you, but I think that that provided a good transition because the pink that's on there is permanently on there, but we can dye it all kinds of other colors, like uh, we'll just go through and pick different stuff. Oh, we got to get some Midnight Violet in there, too. And as you can see, 
you you get kind of a lot of options for for doing these. Oh, not the shoes. It's the pants that we need to change. There we go. And then I'm confused why it's still showing. There we go. Why it was still showing white. So you can see that pink is still on there. And then you can you can uh, undo all changes if you did something that you don't like and you want to go back to however it was, which I prefer. So. I, I really like the color scheme that I've got on it now. I was really struggling trying to get the right colors for that. Ah, so great die system. That's very special. All right, so say we want to talk to the armor smith and we want to see, you know, how does this stuff look on my character? I don't want to spend like two silver a piece just to find out that I don't like it and I want to wear something else. So you can actually preview the armor and you can do all of the pieces or a couple of the pieces if you want to. And... And you can see for yourself as it loads up here exactly how that armor would look. And it's going to go with the, with the whatever dye scheme you've got on your current armor. So you could toy around with that to get different colors from it. But you can actually preview armor without buying it. And the best part is I am a character that can only wear light armor. You see how the heavy armor can't be used by my profession. It doesn't matter. You can still preview it because it's still the same character model. So you can... You can try out all of the heavy armor if you want and see how that looks. So that's that's pretty pretty sweet, and that that's something that I just I can't get enough of. That's an amazing system, an awesome idea, and I'm kind of surprised that more games don't do that. It also works with weapons, uh, as a matter of fact. However, there is something a little bit different that you can do. Say if you get a piece of armor that is really really good, and say you know I've got this piece that's 114 defense and let's say I think that this acolytes coat looks better and it's that guy has way too steep of prices I'm going to find somebody that sells me cheap armor so let's see is there another armor smith in the area I don't see one here so we're gonna pop into lion's arch I'm pretty sure among humans why Extracting gold I from humans is childish. That's another no thing, actually. The world feels really, really full. I, I realize that they're talking really loudly because it just sometimes they do that. Uh, I like to be able to hear them, so I'm sorry if that's like blaringly loud. But I tried to. I tried to get the volume settings right. I tried. Uh, but yeah, hearing hearing the little chatter and stuff sometimes it makes me laugh, and it definitely makes the world feel more alive. So I'm dealing with a low FPS, but hey, I'm going into Radasum, so what do you expect? This is not Radasum. I just left Radasum. Going into Lion's Arch. And let's find some armor trader here. So there's one right there. Armor Smith is not actually up oh, by armor. Sell items. Okay, that is actually what we'd want. So I was thinking that he was the armor crafter, because there's a master craftsman armor over there as well. So we're gonna we're gonna pick up some armor and try it out. If oh man, I get a little bit of a frame rate tank when when I go into areas like this, but it's not this bad as when I'm recording and it's got to load all the textures while saving all of that video information. Whew, six FPS, man, that's got to be pretty noticeable even on YouTube there. All right. So we've got Armor Smith, this dude right here. And we're going to see what he's got. So we, he sells level 50 armor and level 55 armor. He actually won't sell cheaper armor, which is depressing. So I'm going to come buy some on my own, and Until next time. we'll continue on. Well, it turns out all of the traders want to provide level appropriate armor for me. And so I was just going to go out and kill stuff and farm it, but that's going to take too long, and I I've got the money. Who am I kidding? So let's go ahead and just go with what this guy has, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at how this how this works. So we're gonna get this stuff going on, and I think we'll just grab all of that. Forget it. I just made it up to two gold, and. Uh, and now I just threw that in the garbage, but that's all right. All right, so we're going to take a look here at how this... We already know how this ar set of armor looks on me because we've already done it. 
if it'll load. My computer is having like a freak out moment. I kind of need to restart it. So we're gonna we're gonna just leave that on, and let's say, for the sake of argument, because this isn't true, that I think that this armor looks better than this armor. So I wanna I wanna not lose my awesome stats on my armor. So I go to my inventory, which is awesome and resizable, and you can show the different bag compartments and all that stuff, which is amazing. So. Uh, yeah, it's got that the bag just has its own set of amazing options, and I've just been keeping it like that just because it, it looks like it has more empty space that way. Because you don't, I don't know, anyway, it's just personal preference. So, we've got these basic transmutation stones, which works for stuff up to level 79, and you get those by clearing areas. You get three of those every time you clear an area, and you can also get some from karma merchants, I think. You may be able to straight up buy some as well. So, you just use one of those and you throw in your armor that you like the appearance of and your armor that's got better stats and it's got to be the same type but then you'd say all right i want it to look like this and i totally want it to do that and you hit item transmutation and it will destroy both pieces of armor and give you this one piece i'm not going to do that because i actually do really like my silvari armor and i paid a lot to have it um what's what what do we i just had like a I don't know what that was. Why am I making weird noises? We'll just use a tonic to make up for it. Look at me! I'm a weird robot... thing. Alright, Hall of Monuments is actually something that's pretty amazing. And I'm going to go show that to you. For anyone that's linked their Guild Wars account with their Guild Wars 2 account, you'll start out with this little Hall of Monuments stone. And you can just use it to teleport there. And it's actually the only way to get there. Because you may notice there's an Asur gate and the uh, the entrance, which used to just be a really convenient ramp down, has since been, I guess, Jormag, as they actually call him Jormag in the games. I can't really justify calling him Yormag, even if it does sound more, I don't know, Norny, n Norny Norn. But uh, the Hall of Monuments is kind of, I guess this isn't the hall. The Eye of the North has kind of gone to crap. You may notice like the broken glass pieces and stuff, which didn't used to look like that. But it's still here. It still stands. And the scrying pool is still there as well. It's currently being watched over by these ghosts. So here are the, here are the pets you get. That gross looking Black Widow. The Juvenile Black Moa, which still sports its awesome little spiked collars and ankle bracelets. And uh, and there we go. There's the white raven right there, which looks kind of like an owl at a quick glance, but definitely a raven. And then as we venture on inside the Hall of Monuments, you can see that it's sort of had a real beating too. The monuments are no longer there showing all the amazing achievements that I had. You can't see like my massive stack of weapons over here. Nor is Gwen standing here moping, but you know, it is 250 years later. And there is the juvenile rainbow jellyfish, which is pretty cool. And here is Kim's the Historian, which when you talk to him, you can say, show me my legacy and all of the stuff that you've unlocked is available here. And he's like a trader and he gives you all this stuff for free. And he doesn't just give you the weapons and armor. He gives you a, an item to skin them. And so... To show what that means exactly, I'm going to put on this full set, and I'm going to grab all of the heritage equipment here. So we're just going to go with the... There's actually light, medium, and heavy armor for the heritage, and the first one here, it's medium armor, light armor. Light, heritage, gray coat. Okay, so it's the shoes, the pants, the gray coat, the gloves, the mantle and the mask. That's medium. All right, so those are those are those items right there. And then I've also got a little mace, so we may as well throw that in too. Don't I have a mace? Where would that be? I don't seem to. Well, we'll grab one of these just for good measure. All right, so now that we're wearing all this equipment, we're gonna throw on the heritage skins for all of that stuff. And you can see how cool that looks. So next is the great coat. 
I'm like terrified I'm going to mess this up without paying attention or something. Mantle, which is actually just the shoulders, and the mask. And all of these things look really cool. I've never seen it in white. Oh, that's pretty spectacular. So that's what that's what that looks like. There's the mask on there. It's some pretty epic looking stuff. And uh, and you can also like the Stygian axe is also a skin from there. The that's actually. Oh no! Did I? Oh, without thinking about it, I sold my other dagger skin. No, that's the glyphic dagger, which I actually paid a lot to have that skin, even though I don't like it that much. So while we're here, we may as well reskin that weapon as well. Oh, wait. Also this. These are the, the gloves. And we'll have to get rid of... I actually found that that looked really cool when I was buying the other equipment on this set. I got those gloves before I could afford to buy the, uh, the Snapdragon gloves. Because they're these cool little birding wrist things. But they get covered up by like most coats because they don't really cover your fingers. And so while I'm here, we're going to say, show me, I want that dagger, which is actually a really cool dagger, the Centurion's Claw. And we're going to apply it to that. There we go. Farewell. And I can show you what that looks like, because it looks pretty awesome. There we are. All right. There is... There is the centur sorry. There there yeah, Centurion Dagger. Yep. It's pretty awesome stuff. So that's that's the Hall of Monuments. You also get access to the mini pets and the other things. Uh, I don't really think I need to go through and show everything. I just think that that's an awesome system that they had for reskinning your armor while keeping the good stats and uh, so you don't have to gr you don't have to get, you know, the really awesome armor that actually looks not as cool as what you were already wearing and that way you can also apply the prestige skins to when you find better equipment than than the armor that you're wearing you don't have to start having patchwork set it works out it's good stuff and next up the game is it's just gorgeous and I know I say that a lot, and that's something that a lot of other people talk about. The art style is really wonderful. They have this concept art, but I just, I can't say it enough. I'm constantly thinking, did you see that lightning strike? That was pretty cool. The, it just, it looks amazing, and it's so great to be able to play a game that's this beautiful and actually be able to move around and explore. Like that mountain that you see off over there, there's a good chance that I can go down there and stand on it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to guess that I could. Should we try that out? This is one of the things, is that the, the environment is just... It really promotes exploration, and it's really fun to explore. And uh, and you can level up while doing it. And you, you come across new areas, you, you talk to people that are... that are... you know, needing help for various tasks. See here we've got Help Spy and the Crafty Corsairs. So, I, I haven't dealt with Corsairs in a long time because I was I was just going and ripping apart centaurs just a little while ago. But here we got a crafty Corsair, and I can help attack him, and it's going to contribute to this renown heart right there, which is just an interesting way to have quests. It, you know, it, it gives you something that you can go do between yeah, I guess to just familiarize yourself with the area, and and I think I think that that's that's really what makes. For me, that's what makes the dynamic events really work, is that they're just sort of, they're things that happen to the world while you're going around exploring and, and, and learning about the people and other things around it. So, okay, I think we might need to, I don't know if we can get up there. We're going to get closer and see if there's a vista, because if there's a vista, that, that pretty much guarantees that you're able to get up there. Oh, didn't make the jump. But that is a speed buff, so it's not I get much, to run for it. Do. It's not ready much. Here? I was born ready. And let's see. I am that. There we are. So we're exploring a new area. And I don't I don't actually know that I'll be able to go up there, but this is just sort of the basic idea 
is I'm it? I'm telling you, there may still be dredge alive in we there. We should search there, for survivors. There aren't, there aren't your standard. Examining the architecture of the dredge. Shut it's up about the dredge. They're ugly mole people. That. We can. We don't know Even if all dead. that we can do for the dredge Somebody now is to rid their home of their cursed invaders. Exactly. Let's head in and see if there's a place suitable for a base camp. That right there. An event just started. I just walk up, they just start talking about the dredge, and an event begins. And other people in the area can see that this event began, and they can come in to try to work on it. And I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do right now. There's got to be something else. I've never seen. Actually, as we come to this, I think it's really important to notice, or to note... Notice and note, because those are the same thing. It's important to note how... Ooh, I might be able to get a new Master of Damage. Let's see. It was... This is a particularly powerful, potent skill. There we go. Master of Overkill. 25,786 damage in one hit. Oh, yeah. All right, so as I was saying, travel is amazing in this game. I've heard a lot of people like, Do we get mounts? I want to have mounts. And I... You know... I, I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other on having mounts. I mean, mounts are kind of neat, but it it seems like such a, a trivial thing. I mean, the idea that you'd need to have some sort of creature to allow you to get around in the world is, is uh, eh. I mean, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. You spend more time. It was sort of something that existed in the, in the whole pay-to-play model of World of Warcraft, where... It, you actually have to spend real time to get from one place to another, and you have to. It's just part of the time that you'd be playing otherwise to get across the map. So, ah, uh, you know, it's just it's it was a great thing for the model, but that's not what we've got here. We've got these teleportation, these waypoints, and they, uh, you know, you get you get the surrogates, which are free to use, but it's. It's more of a convenience thing to use the waypoints. Obviously, unless you die, that's a whole different thing. But you can save money if you actually want to travel through the world and just use the use the gates, and that's great. And it's really cool, and the world is so gorgeous, I actually will do that a lot of the time. And one of the things that I've done recently to just change the way that I'm experiencing the game is you can have map rotation so that like your character rotates on the map. So this is how I was playing. I was playing with this nice big square map, and I'd be looking at the map constantly as I walked around watching the map, knowing where I was going based on what I could see on the map. And I decided, I was, I mean, I was just spending too much time looking at the map and not enough time looking at the world, which is a very gorgeous world. And I decided to just change it so that the map rotates and I shrunk it down a little bit. And so that way I, I can sort of have that for reference to see what things are immediately around me. But it just sort of gets me to pay a lot more attention to the world because, you know, I can occasionally look and see the compass the, with, where the needle points north. But there is just so much effort put into designing this world, so much unique terrain that you can actually learn your way around just by learning what you're looking at and you can you can see the landmarks and say hey I know I know where that is I know what that is so I can just walk there and you can just see where you're going and and I really I really enjoy that and I you know I'm sure there are other games that have that sort of enjoyable experience of unique terrain and all but it doesn't look as good as this one let's be honest oh and one thing that I like to point out is see this grass wait Wait, some of it, some of it, this grass is actually being stubborn about it. Way to make me look bad, grass. There's some grass that when you walk through it, it will actually move. And that's, that's just a nice touch. Some, like some of the stuff will move around when you, when you pass through it. But apparently all this stuff is kind of static. It still looks nice though, the reeds. You can only do so much. That's all right, I forgive you, Arena Net. So we're gonna map. We're going to map travel, and one of the ways that we could map travel is we can just travel to this waypoint for 78 copper and then use the gate at Lion's Arch to go where we're going to go. Why does it say the spar? That's new to me. All right, I'm not sure. Oh, because that's the 
section. I. That's weird. Because that's the section that it's looking at. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend a whole bunch of money, since we already did that in armor, and teleport straight here to Divinity's Reach. And we're going to go take a look at Ebonhawk. Ebonhawk is the last defense against the char that the humans had. It was it was run by the Ebon Vanguard. Uh, the Ebon Vanguard were the ones that were in the Eye of the North, those ghosts that we saw in the Eye of the North. Those were Ebon Vanguard. And they returned back to Ascalon uh, at the the request of King Adelburn and went back to go fight Char there, and they set up shop in Ebonhawk. They started the city of Ebonhawk in order to defend against the Char. And Ebonhawk just got built up more and more and more and became quite the massive fortress, and it held against the Char longer than any other city, especially like when Ascalon was going to fall, that's when King Adelburn said, not on my watch, and killed everybody. Good job. I think he's a real jerk for that, and I disapprove. That's why I have no problem going in there and murdering ghosts. Statue. Let's take a look at this one. There's just stuff, there's stuff all over the place. Bravery, a strong heart never falters in the face of insurmountable obstacles. I've actually taken to reading a lot more stuff in this game, just because there are so many things that are actually spoken. They just have so much uh, recorded audio. So we're going to the Fields of Ruin. And yeah, those are the, the Ebon Gates, which it looks like something on the Lord of the Rings, huh? Like the two towers, but it's they're the two hawks. Yeah. I don't know. It's I mean it's it's cool. It's really cool. And the interesting thing about this is Ebon Hawk was I mean it was at the time in the books, if you haven't read the books, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of spoilers, but I'll try to keep it relatively clean. They, the times of the books, there were some events going on to try to uh, create a peace between the Char and the humans. And, uh, and like the condition of Queen Jenna helping the humans was going to be based on whether or not the you know this tree went through. So the the Ebon Vanguard would no longer have the support of Queen Jenna if they didn't agree to, you know, they'd lose their gate, they'd lose their, uh, they'd lose their supplies, and, you know, it's funny because you actually do some quests here fighting separatists, and you can talk to people and explain to them why we want the peace treaty. So I don't know why it's giving me nothing for frames here, but I'm going to go ahead and I think we're just, we're going to make a run for it through the city. I'm fast as the wind. There's too much to look at. And we're going to take a look at two things here. There's this point of interest that they have over here. As we navigate through the city. I believe it's going to be right over here. It's a huge city. And though you can't go inside very many places, it's still just the scale of it is so massive. And it's actually right over here. There are the gates to, I guess that's the east gates. There's also north gates. And right up here is a graveyard. And I just sort of stumbled across this without without having any idea what I was coming to. There's this, this cool monument up here, the skill challenge as they put it. It's actually just, you just commune with it. You just like go check it out. But a simple memorial marks the final resting place of Ascalonian hero and Ebon Vanguard commander Gwyn Thackeray, loving wife of Lieutenant Kieran Thackeray and great grandmother to Captain Logan Thackeray, who's currently he was in the Edge of Destiny and he's a he's a pivotal character in this in this game. And we've got uh, dedicated all who bravely fought, and over here Captain Langmar, who actually died during the war in Crida. And that's when Gwyn got her promotion. So that's just, it's rich, rich content in here. They've really fleshed out the world. It's really, it's its whole own place. And so while, uh, like during those books, you have the awakening of Kral Katorik, who, as he pops out of the ground, flies south and creates what's known as the Dragon Brand, which is this giant purple scar, and it's a giant purple crystalline scar and you can actually go check it out which was an, a really amazing experience and we're going to go nearby that we're going to uh, hop over to the blaze ridge steps because this is sort of a continuation of of uh 
that that last Guild Wars video that I made of the Wayfarer's Reverie, the in East Ascalon, it was the first the first Tyrion point. I believe it was the first point that I went to at all. In East Ascalon, there is whoa whoa four five five frames per second. What's going on? Okay, in East Ascalon, there is that giant crystal that we went to go visit, and we're going to go visit that now. So that is it's actually a little bit west of here. You can see the tip of it right over there. So that's something that managed to survive the making of a sequel. You can still go over and check out this giant crystal. And it's funny because actually they have the Grawl uh, worshipping it as, as an idol. And it's it's huge. I, I don't feel like it's quite to the same scale as it was in Guild Wars 1. But it's still, I mean, it's still massive. It still feels very, very big. And so there's that. And, uh, oh, yeah, there are a bunch of Grawl over there. And they're doing a summoning ritual, which I'm just going to, I'm just going to bail on that. Oh, fire's raining down from the sky. That's what it looks like. Let's see. We want to keep heading west. And I'm going to, I'm going to go fast as the wind here and just blaze past. There are a lot of enemies over here. we're going to take a look at the dragon brand itself. The first time I stumbled across this, I just, there's this sort of purple haze and I saw this branded char walking towards me out of it. And I just realized at that moment, oh my God, I'm right next to the dragon brand. I'm actually, I'm actually like walking into this. And that was, that was a pretty awesome and unique experience. And it's something that I really, really enjoyed that it's, Kind of unique to this game. I don't know of any other games that have a dragon brand. Or environmental weapons. Like, I can go pick up that boulder and I can throw it at an enemy. That's just fun. Wait. Where? 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 There it is. Okay. Grab you, Mr. Boulder. And, yeah, the Char have sort of set up shop here. And if we get over to the right point... We've got dragon brand attacking the southern wall... So here we've got a branded devourer. Yeah, I I'm I depressed that the frames are dropping so much here, but we'll do what we can. Oh, this is painful. Why computer? Why? It's totally playable when I'm not recording. I think I think it's confused. It's trying to do something. Alright, one computer restart later and we're back on track getting more than 10 frames per second, which is which is nice. It's that's what we call playable. And I'm just trying to get somewhere where I can actually get a nice view. Oh, we're fighting off devourers that are attacking the west wall, the west side of that wall. It's just sort of a char steel death thing. I I don't know. Let's see. So we can head over out of the west side of the Dragon Brand. And there is something in particular that I'm that I'm looking for. Let me see if I'm I might be too far north. Nope, I'm just gonna come right over here because this is actually the region that I'm thinking of. Now that we saw the crystal, that was what we were going for. And we enter the Blaze Ridge Steppes. Steps. I know. I know. I know. But there's there's nothing to say about that screen except you might have seen that picture. That dragon in that picture is the Shatterer. And look at that. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? This is this is. I think when I came here, it it blew my mind. I was. I I. I think, I mean, I could even equate this to, if, if you've played through Skyrim, the section where you go into whatever it is, like the, the you follow the dragon. I don't remember. This game has taken over everything that I care about dragons. All right, so you see that down there. 
that's that's one of those channeling skill challenges. There's actually a quest down there that owned me really hard um, that I had to do. But this section, as it's so aptly named right here, is the Wreckage of Serenity. And Serenity Temple is actually something that you come across with Prince Rurik as you play through the story in Guild Wars 1. When you do the Ruins of Sermia mission, you fight your way into Serenity Temple, and he does a, a little a ritual to um, open up this gate so that you can escape from the char, and that's where you find the mouthpiece of Stormcaller is in Serenity Temple, and the char have basically taken over that entire area at that point in the story, and uh, and then you continue on south until they take Rin in the next mission, the Nolanai Academy. So you may have heard that that sound. That was actually the Shatterer, and if you look around, you can see the lightning in the sky. The Shatterer likes to make lightning happen in the sky. And where are we looking for it? The first time that I noticed this, actually, it was just a shadow that passed over my head, and I was like, wait, what was that? So there goes the Shatterer. Yeah, there's actually a dragon flying around in the sky, and you can see his shadow pass over you if you're near the dragon brand. He just flies around patrolling it. And, uh, and I'm going to let you figure out the rest, because it's amazing, and it's really intense. Good stuff. Just in case you forgot, the game is really, really, really pretty. I mean... You can, like, walk to all of these places that you can see there, too. It's not just... You see that, that vista right there? You can, uh... You have to do it from the other side of the waterfall, but you can jump down there, too. Actually, let's go ahead and see if I can jump down entirely. We're going to... Yeah, let's get down to the bottom of this. Why not? Because we need to we need to head east, actually. That's why not. Okay. The, the other... One of the other places that... Who's on fire? I don't know. It does the, that's like, I, I think that qualifies as a bug. You just hear voices sort of much louder than they should be. Uh, one of the other locations that we went to, we don't care about the destroyers right now. That's, that's not on my agenda. One of the other places that we went to in the Wayfarer's Reverie was to Keswick's Peak, where we could go up and visit the, this is not a good place to be. I'm surrounded by Eddins. Yeah, don't, don't hurt me. Let's see if I can actually get where I'm going. I, I actually went to the wrong waypoint, and it just costs way too much money to move the 30 feet to the east across the gorge. So we'll do what we can. And my swiftness is about to wear off. So we're going to go check out that wizard's tower thing that's there. We're just going to look at the Guild Wars 2 iteration of it. You can actually see it floating right there in the sky. It doesn't have the rocks chained to it. Uh, we are going to... Here, this is going to be fun. Oh, it's just one guy. The other ones are running away, so... This is easy enough. This skill actually cripples, which can make that really easy. And once you've crippled him, you can switch to this, because this skill doesn't cripple, but it it does... Uh, it chills them, so that slows them down as well. And, of course, then you can throw down one of these marks, and that will make them run away and put some distance between you as you like apply bleeding or other damage. And then uh, and then you can go into Death Shroud and you can make them flee with that too. And they actually changed this. It used to be that you had to stand still. We are going to re-enter the queue. You used to actually have to stand still. There, chilled. Chilled with that now too. And then, there we go. Okay, I was about to cripple him again. You used to have to stand still to use life transfer. And they fixed that. I don't know if it was... if I'd say fixed, but... Strawberries are good. Oh! That's... Strawberries are good. I made strawberry cookies with them. I figured out how to make cookie dough, and... I, uh, and I made some strawberry cookies. Pretty awesome. And then we've got diving goggles. So we can put those on... Oh, look, I'm naked. Down to my bare leaves. But those goggles look funny. Alright. Yeah, there's that wizard's castle over here in Keswick Sills, and we can take a look at we Sploosh! And then put my clothes back on, please. 
and there is this this town uh, actually is protected by elementals that are presumably managed by whatever wizard is managing to stay in that keep uh, floating in the sky so that's kind of an interesting thing uh, that's a skill challenge where you have to fight that fire elemental to show people how to combat or something so there's a tamed elemental and they basically protect the town if you come up here you can actually hear a conversation right here wizard dolls tower construction sets good ideas get to work on them they talk about the tower. Here is, yeah, the one and only town guard. How can there only be one guard? He's like, the elementals keep us safe. In all honesty, I really don't do anything. I'm here more to keep up appearances than anything else. And you ask him if he's worried, and he's like, nah, why worry about it? They'd kill us all anyway. So that's the story here. I, I think I may have had some confusion. I thought that uh, the vizier Kilbron was responsible for this, that it was his home, but apparent, or that no, I'm sorry. That's not what I thought. What I thought is that the person that sunk ore was responsible for this, but I think I had read that uh, Vizier Kilbron is the one that actually sunk ore, and it's... I don't know for certain. I actually am not sure, because now I've got conflicting stories on that, but that's obviously not the Viz... I don't know what I'm talking about. More diving! Oh. Oh, I got it to glitch out a whole bunch doing that before. Oh, look at that. That was kind of cool. All right. So uh, so that's that's going to be about it, I think. Oh, yeah. Underwater is really pretty. But uh, I'm, I'm sure there's thousands of hours of more stuff that I can talk about right now. But I'll be honest with you. I just discovered that there's this whole section over here, uh, Lornar's Pass, that I haven't even ventured into that's way below my level and I gotta get that one taken care of and uh, and dredge knot cliffs and uh, I still haven't finished blood tide coast and then there was a, a a bug over here in blaze ridge steps you may have noticed that I wasn't completely finished with that because I can't actually finish that skill challenge it's just doesn't work so I, I'm I want to get back to I want to get back to doing these wonderful amazing things and I uh, I hope that if there's anybody that was on the fence that that has convinced... I don't know. The game is amazing, and anybody that thinks that it's it wouldn't be fun is wrong. That's I mean, that's just a fact. It's not even a matter of opinion. And, and that's all I have to say about that. So you will see me later. Oh, can you wave underwater? i gotta, I got to check this out. Dang it. No, you can't. All right. Yeah. You'll... Uh, well, what did I just do? You will see me later. Oh, wait, I'm underwater. See me later.